This colossal old Alienware laptop has upgradability that humiliates modern laptops. And in today's video, I'm gonna push that upgradability to the limit. boxes that look like they may contain a black market kidney are the kind of upgrades for this Alienware laptop that are unheard of in a modern laptop. But before we drop them in there, we need to get some baseline performance readings for some good old context. So now we get to see if the laptop still works after the first time I tore it down. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's quite a complex thing to break down, so I may have just broken it. Uh, let's see, let's see how it works. Lighting up's happening. Okay, there we go. That's a good sign. But the good sign was short-lived. Oh, that's not ideal. And after a couple more blue screens of death, combined with the BIOS still reading the boot drive, I just assumed that the Windows install corrupted. Which turned out to be the case. Reinstalling Windows fixed everything. Hey, that's fixed it. So let me just install the drivers and then we can get to our baseline tests. Um, I feel like there's supposed to be like game happening right now, isn't there? What was that? For some reason, GTA 5's canned benchmark would just pretend to run without showing us any of the gameplay, which feels a little selfish. So I decided to instead try the single player to see if maybe that was any better. Okay, well at least with a normal game, we see game happening. And funnily enough, despite the game not actually showing during the canned benchmarks, it looks like we're getting very similar performance. Yeah, with 1080p high settings, GTA 5 with both the graphics cards running, we're averaging between 60 and 70 frames per second. 1080p low settings in Battlefield 5, we're averaging mid 30s to 40 frames per second. It's not a great experience, quite frankly, and uh, as you can tell, the, the second GPU is basically not doing anything. Although, temperature and noise-wise, the system is doing very well for a laptop. And when we've got a big view going, we're in the low 30s. So this is our benchmark. Hopefully, we can overcome this pretty pedestrian loser performance with our upgrade. Especially considering the hilarious cyberpunk results. Now, when it comes to things like storage and RAM, the previous owner already upgraded this laptop quite significantly. So we're gonna be focusing on the CPU and the graphics cards. Ooh. I am very excited to be replacing the two GTX 765Ms that are currently in the laptop with GTX 880Ms. That's some gross glue. And there is our beautiful GTX 880M. Now there are significantly more powerful MXM GPUs available than this. In fact, you can even find RTX 2080 MXM boards floating around on AliExpress. But I didn't want to risk any compatibility issues, so I decided to go with the highest end Keplar MXM boards. Either way, this should be a pretty big upgrade. And as you can tell by this little connector, they do still support SLI, so we should be able to get both of them running together in our laptop. You've probably also noticed that this board doesn't come with a cooler. So we're gonna have to hope that A, the cooler that's on the card in the laptop already fits on this and that it can handle this board because it has almost double the TDP. Um, yeah, this may potentially not go very well. Unfortunately, the CPU is a lot less exciting. It's just another quad core that's slightly higher clocked and may have a little bit more cash, maybe. So now that we've got our upgrades ready, it's time to tear down our big ass Alienware laptop and inject the steroids straight into its heart.
now that I've done several lifetimes worth of screwing, I have to turn the laptop over and spelunk through the other side. This kind of feels like using show dolphins in an aquarium. You're just doing so much damage to something that means you no harm. But eventually the dolphin abuse paid off. Oh yes. Oh yes, there we go, the damage is done, I think. Oh, these laptop guts are a thing of beauty. Now I'm really hoping that these two heat pipe coolers can handle the 880Ms. I'm also hoping that all of the kind of stuff that contacts power delivery and whatever is just the same on the different MXM card. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I just noticed that it says 75 watt on the heatsink. I'm sure that's just a suggestion. You know, it's kind of like best before, but for graphics card coolers, right? In terms of the CPU, I think it's gonna be a much easier just straight drop and replacement. But let's start with the graphics cards. I remember this being quite a traumatic process, but hopefully this time it isn't. Oh, no, it is, it is still traumatic. Oh! Oops. And then this is our pathetic little GTX 765M that we're replacing, which we have to harvest the definitely adequate cooler off. I think it just pops off, right? Like, oh, yeah, there we go. Now, in terms of things like memory and power delivery contact, this actually does look basically identical to the 880M card. And if you look at the two cards side by side, they do look essentially identical, except for there being a lot more stuff on here and the die is significantly chonkier. But that's a good sign. I think this is gonna work really well. Just like that, I think we're good. It looks like everything's making solid contact. And the only thing that concerns me is that all of the other memory has stuff contacting it, except for this bro. But I'm, I'm guessing that's fine, I don't know. Now, unfortunately, replacing the cooler on the second GTX 880M wasn't as straightforward because it had a different mounting bracket on it to the three other MXM boards for some reason. So I had to violently pry the one off of the GTX 765M so that I could use that as a replacement. Yeah, that didn't suck at all. The second one may have been significantly more traumatic than the first one, but <laughs> at least we're done. And after successfully dropping in the new CPU, I just had to do the three years of screwing it takes to reassemble this big ass Alienware laptop. And just like that, six years later, our upgrade's done. So now, let's see if it's worked. But as I powered up the laptop for the first time, I made a terrible realization. I forgot the SLI bridge. Oh, that really sucks. I'm gonna have to completely tear it down again to put this back on. So after the laptop successfully booted and a whole bunch of shouting, I decided to embark on the six year teardown process again. One eternity later. Okay, I'm finally done with the reassembly process. Again, I'm sure it's gonna be worth the 3% performance scaling we're gonna get from it. Uh, but either way, the upgrade's been successful. So now I can download the drivers and see how much more performance we get and if the laptop explodes. Oh no, the canned benchmark still isn't sharing its gameplay, but it has crashed several times, so that's new. As was the case with the previous GPUs, at least the normal game runs, and we are getting a reasonable amount more frame rate. It's about double. Ooh, yeah, it's it's not it's not really double anymore, is it? In fact, the performance is very similar. Uh, it is a bit higher, but. Yeah, it, it, it's not the jump I was expecting. I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that GTA 5 doesn't seem to like quad cores very much, and our CPU upgrade may not have helped a whole lot. One of the benefits of that, though, is that the temperatures are fine. We're not seeing massive temperature increases over the previous uh, configuration, and it isn't much noisier either. So at least we've got that going for us. Would you look at that? With Battlefield 5, we're actually getting gameplay showing 
and it's running a lot better. We're getting about double the frame rate we did before, and it, it's much more playable. Like, it actually feels like a usable Battlefield 5 gaming experience. And in terms of temperatures, I mean, it's higher, but it's still really good for a laptop, and so is the noise. Yeah, that 75 watt cooler apparently is enough. Oh, that guy is definitely not hacking. Very nice. This system's handling the upgrade better than I was expecting. Although it is quite unstable. GTA 5 crashed like four times and this has crashed twice already. Instability aside, Cyberpunk at 1080p low settings also saw huge gains. Although that does seem a whole lot less exciting when you realize I paid over $600 for the two graphics cards and the CPU, which feels like a lot for an extra 10 frames per second in Cyberpunk. And on that terrible financial decision, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider watching another one. A suggestion will pop up in a second. And until the next video, bye bye.